Hey everyone, it's uh, been a while. As you may know, this car was built originally for my dad. It was the uh, same kind of car that he uh, used to own back in the 70s, a 71 240Z, and it was his favorite car. He sold his Zs. Um, so uh, I bought the car with the intentions of gifting it to him once it was restored. When we went to pick up the car, in its neglected state, I said, this is the car that you're going to drive. This car is for you. And he was ecstatic. So ecstatic, as you know, that he volunteered to rebuild the engine. So he rebuilt the engine last year, and it was completed. But there was some roadblocks with getting the body back from the, the body shop. They had it for a year, and that's just because of delays, and it was just... It didn't go the way I expected it to, but uh, I finally got it back. And then after getting the car back, about two weeks later, my dad ended up passing away. I I don't know what to say really. This it's uh, it's. Uh, I don't know what kind of divine timing the universe had, but... <sighs> I did a lot of work on it over the past few months. Trying so hard to get this car complete and to him as soon as I could, but... The dad-son project um, is almost complete, but unfortunately my dad is not going to be around to drive it or hear the engine he rebuilt. God has plans for all of us and we never know when our time is up so we I, I it's been years and years I've been searching for a Z and same with my dad and I finally find one and you know yeah I, I I'm, I'm sorry I I'm just so lost for words this engine of his is going to be turned over for the first time. And uh, I'm sorry guys to make this such an emotional video. I just, I, I don't know what to say. It's, I'm baffled. My dad was a healthy guy. Like he exercised almost every day. And um, he, he exercised, he ate well. Like he was a hard working guy and like he took care of himself. So for him to die... It was just, it just wasn't fair. I just don't get it. I don't get it. But he died of a, a disease. <clears throat> I just don't understand why the timing had to work out where he couldn't, where it happened at a time where <clears throat> his dream car essentially was going to be back in his hands and God took that away from him. I, I, this universe works in crazy ways. You know, my dad was my, my mentor when it came to repairing cars. He taught me everything I needed to know. He got me into racing. He he used to race cars himself. I'm going to put together a montage um, on my dad because he deserves it. Like, everything that he's done, accomplished, motorsports-wise, I think you guys would be pretty interested to hear because he, he was pretty cool. Coming from Africa at the age of uh, 14, and then he got into Formula V racing. He held a lap record at Mosport for many years in Formula V. And he, he had a tough time, you know, racing in the 70s and 80s as the only colored driver, essentially. And he did pretty good on a grassroots budget. So I'm going to, I'm definitely going to show you a montage uh, of all of that, of his racing career, which was modest, but I'm like so proud to be his son. And I'm so privileged to have him as my father and for, you know, the opportunities he's given me. Anyways, let's change the uh, subject here. So I'm going to crank the engine over and the best practice of breaking in an engine, a rebuilt engine, is to pull the valve cover off, put some oil 
brush oil on the uh, camshaft and down the timing chain. So that's what I'm going to do here. The reason why I put oil on the camshaft and the chain, a couple reasons, mainly because I don't want to turn the engine over with it being dry, but also they state that it's a good way of building up oil pressure fairly quickly. So that's the main reason I did that. I'm also going to pull all the spark plugs out and crank the engine over so that there's no load on the bearings and that will allow the oil pressure also to build up quicker. The oil filter has already been primed, so I took it out, I put oil in it. Then it's going to be ready to start up. Oh, once I take all the spark plugs out and I crank it, there's no fuel in the gas tank. So I don't have to worry about any kind of gas shooting out here. Once I crank it over, then I'm going to put gas in it. And then I'm going to attempt to hopefully have it fire up. We're going to, with the spark plugs out, we're going to uh, crank the key forward and build up oil pressure before I put gas in it. Gas is in, the spark plugs are connected, and it's ready to start. We did see the gauge move a little bit on the oil pressure. so high so I keep killing it as soon as it starts up because it's well, let's see what it's running up to here okay, yeah, I don't want to rev it over 2,000 rpm just yet so I gotta figure out why it's racing like that this engine's uh, first time running essentially in over 20 years let's see if we can get this thing tuned up properly for the next start okay so Idle I turned right down into the Datsun forums. If it's idling high, uh, it could be because the choke cables are uh, too tight. And I can see that uh, this one's a bit higher than that side. So I'm gonna just adjust that down and we'll try it again. So let's see what happens here. Did it again. So just so you know, I'm shutting it off as soon as I see it climb uh, over 2,000 RPM because I don't want to hurt this freshly rebuilt engine. So they say to try not to rev it over 2,000 RPM upon the first start until all your inspections are done and the car's brought up to uh, regular operating temperatures. Uh, here's another view of the interior. That's all the original uh, parts from 71.